Okay, well, happy Saturday afternoon to you all. It is uh, Saturday, February 1st, and it has been a while since I've done a ride vlog. I've been so squashed with work over the last uh, couple of months. Great for business, uh, bad for personal time. <laughs> so, it is a beautiful sunny day, clear day here in Houston. Uh, Temperatures are about 67, 68 degrees right now. Light breeze. And it's just beautiful out here. I'm going to go for a ride. I'm going to head over to Wild West Motoplex and uh, I don't know, just see what's going on over there. See if there's any new uh, interesting toys. Uh, need to pick up my second cub haven't done that yet not really in a big hurry to get it until closer to uh, scooter cannonball time which is uh, beginning of July but I do need to get the bike at least a couple of months early uh, so I have time to prep it and get it past break-in and all that you know, before it's abused for 8,000 miles I have to install the accessories and things like that on it and make sure that everything is really roadworthy and ready to go before we embark on that journey. Uh, so, I don't know, I'll probably pick that up this month, or sometime soon. Or my 790 Adventure KTM that I reserved, paid for, never picked up, uh, is now on a significant markdown. So I might, <laughs> God, that motorcycle honked at this guy because he came out into the intersection without looking. Um, I'm still debating on whether I'm going to take delivery of that bike. Uh, I like it, but I don't know that I've got the time right now to take that on. Um, I think it's just been so busy. I really need to get rid of a couple bikes before I add too many more to the stable. And time management is just a real challenge right now. So I've been holding off uh, and I'm also going to be uh, getting a, another car sometime soon, just uh, different transportation. So I've been trying to watch the big expenditures because we've got a lot of family vacation stuff and other uh, projects that are chewing up large sums of money. So just trying to avoid my extravagant expenses, you know, anything that uh, makes me feel guilty that it was, you know, just a me thing instead of something for the family or planning or whatever. And unfortunately, my riding hobby is uh, just a solo adventure, you know, with the exception of my son doing stuff occasionally. Uh, the riding is just for me. My wife is not much of a uh, motorcycle person. She just doesn't have the gene. And that's okay. Get some bikes out today. I'm getting past 50 today. That's crazy. There's a pretty stiff wind here. I'm going into about a probably a 15 mile an hour headwind, but wow, I'm pinned open and I'm barely getting over 52 indicated. I ran third gear as high up as I could get it.
good timing. Oh, goody. We got stuff going on today. Okay, let's see what toys they have on sale. All right, well, I spent uh, way too long here. I've been here for ooh, uh, at least two hours, probably going on three now. I've been here a while. Had a bunch of hot dogs out here in the front and uh, chatted around with the employees that work here and a whole bunch of customers and just uh, having a relaxing day. <laughs> so many of the customers uh, were talking to me and asking me questions and uh, my opinions on stuff and this and that. They thought I worked there. <laughs> I'm there so much, they've probably seen me before and they just assumed that I was an employee. That was kind of funny. I'm not dressed very well to sell motorcycles, but people were still interested in talking to me. I had a bunch of people standing out front uh, looking at the Cub in the parking lot. Uh, they have a red one, the new 2020, in there on the showroom, and they were going out to look at the, uh, you know, the traditional color scheme of the 19 uh, anniversary color scheme, whatever you want to call it. And when they found out it was my bike, they wanted to talk to me about it. So we were in there discussing uh, rumor mill bikes and, uh, you know, possibilities of what's coming out on the horizon in the very near future uh, for Honda and Yamaha and a few, a few of the manufacturers. And um, I think I'm pretty much made up on my decision to halt my uh, 790 Adventure purchase just because I don't have a lot of uh, faith in KTM and I don't want that to sound like a dig or uh, you know a, a disparagement toward uh, KTM because I haven't owned one so I can't say that uh, with any authority I just know that uh, I've heard a lot of horror stories of people uh, having mechanical problems with KTMs and uh, you know they're, they're not known as being uh, hyper reliable bike you know just, uh, they, they've got issues whether it's electrical or mechanical or whatever and I don't really want to get into that I, I uh, would rather enjoy my toy and not have to worry about it breaking down on me I've already had enough of the, uh, the weird little quirks and niggles uh, with my Riker so I'll try to stay out of the unknowns right now if I can so I'll stay with one of the uh, more mainstream bikes that I know and trust, uh, be it a Yamaha or a Honda or whatever, uh, BMW. Uh, no, it didn't see me. Um, so I'm going to wait uh, on my ADV bike purchase. Uh, I'm going to uh, hope for the new uh, Baby Africa Twin that's been rumored to come out maybe next year. Uh and that's going to be based on the NC750X motor, I believe, with uh, more of an off-road capable chassis. So I might do that, and uh, we'll see. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm kind of leaning toward uh, BMWs. Uh, I don't know if I'll get into the 1250GS or if I'll uh, look more into the 900 that just came out. So... I don't really relish the idea of spending double the amount on the bike. Um, the the 790 Adventure I could pick up for around 10000 right now, which is very attractive price-wise. But if it's not going to be a reliable machine uh, and I'm going to end up with a lot of downtime or you know, repairs or whatever, then uh, that $10,000 uh, price tag doesn't really keep its shine for very long. 
Uh, conversely, you know, spending uh, anywhere from 12000 for the, the low-end BMW, the new uh, 850s or 900s that just came out, uh, those are more reliable bikes. And then, you know, on up to 20000 plus for the 1250 GS. I mean, everybody knows those are reliable, uh, round-the-world kind of bikes. But uh, I don't really want something as big as the 1250 uh, for the kind of riding and stuff that I would do with an ADV bike. Uh, I don't particularly care for anything over about 350 pounds in the, the rough stuff, you know, in the dirt, gravel, forestry roads, things like that. Um, if you're going to get crazy with it or actually have some fun with your off-roading, uh, anything that gets over the 400 and something pound mark it starts to be a real challenge to manhandle it uh, and your chance for injury goes up pretty drastically uh, disproportionately uh, as the weight of the bike increases because uh, it's just got more inertia on its side and you know, your chance of breaking an ankle or ending up under the bike and uh, things like that are uh, a lot higher. Um, and of course, all that depends on riding skill and your ability to uh, prevent the mishap and how skillful you are in dismounting the bike, you know, when it's going down. Just let it go, get away from it kind of thing. Uh, but then at the end of all that, trial and tribulation is picking the machine up. And again, the heavier it is, the harder that is. And uh, a lot of the off-road stuff I like doing, uh, I don't get into the heavy really gnarly single track stuff in the deep woods but uh, I do like doing the forest trails and the gravel roads and stuff like that where uh, most motorcycles fear to tread just because you're going to dump it <laughs> this is not it's not if it's when you, you are going to dump it it's just a matter of time and uh, more often you have to pick that machine up and the heavier it is uh, the more damage it's going to do and the harder it's going to be to lift it over and over and over again So a smaller, lighter bike, uh, somewhere under the 400 pound mark is ideal. You know, if you want to get into real dirt bikes and off-road bikes, then you never want to see that thing over about 250 pounds, but uh, it's a hard order to fill with uh, modern street bikes and ADV bikes because they're all uh, very well trimmed out and very heavy. Hey, second gear. That was my idea uh, for the the new trail cub, the CT125, uh, that is in concept phases right now. But hopefully, it will be actually produced, released sometime soon. I would like to get uh, one or two of those, and it's a you know they're trail bikes. They're not real hardcore ADV bikes by any stretch of the imagination, but they're lightweight. They're simple, and you know, Honda reliability, they're just going to be about as bulletproof as they get, and that bike could go anywhere. Now, you're not going to get there fast, but it could really tackle uh, pretty much any crazy off-road chore that you ever want to throw at it, uh, and in places where, you know, they don't have enough power to climb up a hill or, you know, get high attack speed toward a hill or, you know, whatever that might be, so what? put it in first gear, run next to the bike. There's no clutch to feather. You just turn the throttle a little bit. Uh, it's, uh, I, you can ask me how I know on that because I had a, a CT110, a Trail 110, uh, many, many years ago. and There's nowhere that I couldn't go with those bikes. Uh, we, we tackled some just bizarrely stupid road chores and uh, trail chores with those things and wrecked them over and over again, sunk them in mud bogs up to the handlebars, you name it, uh, and they were just unkillable. So I have no doubt that the new model will be just about as unkillable. Uh, the only potential difference is the electronics, you know, the fuel injection. That makes them a little bit more complex, uh, and if you 
have a totally dead battery, you're not going to be able to push start it. So that might be a problem. But other than that, they're going to be amazing little machines. So I want to take uh, a CT125 across the country on the transatlantic trail. Five or six thousand miles worth of off-road. I think that would be epic. <laughs> I told my wife I was just going out for a quick ride. She's probably wondering where I am. I've been gone for almost three hours. I thought about going camping tonight. I still could, I suppose. It's getting a little uh, late in the day for me to grab my go bag and get to where I would need to get before dark. Should have thought about it earlier. It's really nice. It's going to be chilly tonight down in the, uh, I think it's uh, low 40s, but it's still very good for camping. When I left, those kids were out here in the hammocks, and they're still in the hammocks. So they're having a lazy day like I am. All right, well, thanks for tagging along, and uh, catch you on the next one.